Firstly, download the JetBrains runtime from GitHub. I've left the link in the description. So now we're here, you're gonna to wanna to go to releases, and here's the latest, and then download the correct one for your operating system, which for me is Linux x64. I should probably mention that I did get this working on Windows, but my application ran so unbelievably slow with this JDK installed that I just switched to Linux and that completely solved it. So if you're facing that problem, there's your solution. But yeah, I should probably explain what this is. JBR is an alternative JDK, which has a lot of features, but one of them is built-in hot swap functionality. It's basically a replacement from what I can see for DCVM, which was the original, what you call class redefinition handler. But DCVM isn't available for Java 21 as far as I can see. So when you've downloaded the file, go to your downloads folder and then unzip it. I'll extract it here. Obviously, this will look a little bit different depending on what operating system you're using, but the same guidelines still apply. So I'll extract this here. It's there. Oh, I've already done it, but just copy this. And then you're going to want to go to wherever the JDKs are installed on your system. For me, and if you're using Linux, probably for you, it's going to be in... I'll just go to other locations to get to my, you know, actual... I don't know what you call it, like main directory, and then home, your username. And then this is really important. Make sure you go here and make sure show hidden files is selected. And this is the same for Windows. You need to show hidden files, but I'll get to the specifics for Windows in a minute. Then you want to click on .jdks and paste in to here your folder that you just extracted you see i've already done this for the original installation oh yeah also what you want to do is get this and take it out of the folder because you have a nested folder with probably the same name and you don't want that so do that i've already done that so i'll just delete this and then go to the second github link that i've linked in the description and when you're here You'll click on releases and then download 1.4.2 snapshot. Go to assets and download this hot swap agent 142. Just copy this again and go back to the folder that you just extracted the folder to. Go in here and go into lib. If it isn't there already, which it probably won't be for you, make a new folder and call it hot swap. Paste the jar into here and just remove the version name. Just call it hot swap agent.jar. And then as you can see, I've already got something called Hot Swap Agent Core in here, which for me is something that I did need. So to get that, go down to 1.4.1, download Hot Swap Agent Core, and do the same thing, remove the version name, just call it Hot Swap Agent Core, and leave it like that. For me, I don't actually need this jar because I'm only using the core functionality, and I'll get to that in a minute. Then go into your IDE. I recommend IntelliJ because it is objectively the best Java IDE. Come at me. And then go to these three dots, edit, and make a new configuration. And you're gonna want it to be a jar application. And then you're gonna wanna put in the path to your jar, your application in its jar form. This is just an example, so I'll leave it blank. And then put in these VM options. The first one is allow enhanced class redefinition, which just enables the hot swap feature. And then this hot swap agent equals core I've put, which basically means that no plugins other than the standard JVM plugins will be used. And the other main option for this is fat jar what this refers to is the core obviously you can probably guess refers to hot swap agent core and the fat jar refers to the bigger file hot swap agent dot jar you don't need both of these but i'm showing you for the sake of it for me only core works because when it tries to load plugins errors just come up and obviously these aren't the only vm options that you can have in here you can have you know anything that you'd usually have but here's the important thing and you know, <laughs> make sure to do this, otherwise it won't work. You want to go to JRE. And then scroll down and find where you installed your custom JDK, the JBR, and then select it. If you don't do this, your program will not run at all because it won't recognize these options. And then, and this is really key, you need to press debug, not run press debug. I'm just using uh, my 
automatically configured one here. If you want to reload a class, I'm just gonna make a change here. What you wanna do is press Control, Shift, and then F9. And it'll pop up there, loaded classes are up to date. Um, well, <laughs> if they're up to date, it will say loaded classes are up to date. But if not, it will say, you know, like one class reloaded or however many, yeah, so here, one class reloaded. There might be some errors here, but don't worry about that, it does actually work. But yeah, I'm actually currently um, developing from Minecraft server here. So if you're interested on that, videos will be coming out about that. Um, but also, as you can see, it took like 38 seconds to boot up, which, <laughs> you know, you can probably imagine that if you want to test your code after you add like every single feature, that can really add up when you have to restart your server every single time. So the fact that you can just hot swap and reload a class with literally a click of three buttons, it's pretty amazing, I'm not gonna lie. This is probably one of the coolest things that I've seen recently. But yeah, if you specifically want to know how to set this up from Minecraft plugin, I'm gonna link the video at the end of this one and you can watch that. That is when I upload that. But if you are interested, good. I need more watch time. <laughs> um, but it's good because you would need to watch this video anyway to understand that. So you've already done <laughs> the hard part, basically. Anyway, hope this helps you. I hope you find this as interesting as I do. I know I sound like a little bit of a nerd there, but... <laughs> You know, I've got me some slack. If you are interested, stay tuned. And I am actually making a Minecraft server here. This is what I'm developing for, obviously. So if you're interested in that, also stay tuned, please, because it would really mean a lot to me. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.